right, starting line, if you're able to stand, hymn number 283, 283, Joy Unspeakable. Joy Unspeakable. Hymn number 283. I have found his grace is all complete. He supplieth every need. While I sit and learn and Jesus feed. I am free, yes, free indeed. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory, full of glory. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. Oh, the half has never yet been told. Hold that second. I have found the pleasure I once craved. It is joy and peace within. What a wondrous blessing I am saved from the awful gulf of sin. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory. I have found the joy no tongue can tell, how its waves of glory roll. It is like a great overflowing well springing up within my soul. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory, full of glory, full of glory. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory. Well, let's remain standing. And Brother Terry Hobson, would you come up and pray for us tonight, Brother Terry? Yeah, come on up. And, and uh, remember to pray for Miss Millie Farr. We mentioned her organs shutting down. And, and uh, pray to God to be with her and give grace and comfort and all that during this time. And she's in the Lord's hands. Amen. And um, be mindful to pray uh, also for the Allison Dumas family and the loss of her uncle. And uh, we're probably going to have that service here in the church on Thursday. And... Um, her uncle passed away, and, and uh, they were going to do a graveside, but they, they can't be back from his cancer treatment till the afternoon, and it's going to be really, really hot. So I think we may just move it in here to have the cool and, and you know, that type of thing. And so anyway, just pray about that and just pray that we could uh, preach the gospel at the funeral, and the Lord's will be done with all of that, okay? And we appreciate that very much. And uh, so let's bow our heads. We'll pray. Brother Terry, you come on. Pray. Father, Lord, uh, we thank you, God, to put, for another uh, opportunity, um, Lord, to lift you up and uh, sing praise to you, Lord. God, we certainly appreciate all you do and love, um, God, uh, all the, the mercy that you've shown us, Lord. God, we're so undeserving, and Lord, truly, uh, we owe you uh, our, every bit of our life, Lord. And pray now that you would just uh, bless the service, Lord, help us to lift our voice to you, and um, God to worship you in spirit and truth and pray that you be with those that are, are, are sick and Lord and those that are not, are not able to be here and uh, we love you and we ask in Jesus Christ's name, amen. Amen, thank you, may be seated, we'll hear from the youth choir now and uh, oh, the ju uh, junior choir I appreciate the junior choir, this is their first time that, uh, sing since, uh, since all the COVID stuff and I miss them singing too amen, amen. they're a blessing so anyway uh, That'll be good. We got some out of town tonight, but, but this will be a blessing when we get to crank back up. Amen. It's good.
285, 285, leaning on the everlasting arms. <clears throat> 285.
mind leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms. To walk in this pilgrim way, leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how bright the path grows from day to day, leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms. at peace with my Lord so near, leaning on the everlasting arms, leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms, leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms, 298, 298. Now I belong to Jesus, 298. <clears throat> Jesus, my Lord, will love me forever. From him no power of evil can sever. He gave his life to ransom my soul. Now I belong to him. Now I belong to Jesus. Jesus belongs to me. Not for the years of time alone, but for eternity. Once I was lost in sin's degradation, Jesus came down to bring me salvation, lifted me up from sorrow and shame. Now I belong to him. Now I belong to Jesus. Jesus belongs to me. Not for the years of time alone, but for eternity. Joy floods my soul, for Jesus has saved me, freed me from sin that long had enslaved me. His precious blood he gave to redeem. Now I belong to him. Now I belong to Jesus. Jesus belongs to me. Not for the years of time alone, but for eternity. Thank you. you may be seated. And we'll have the ushers come forward at this time and we'll receive our evening offering. And uh, yeah, come on and help us there. Caleb, you can come help. And, uh, Brother Terry, you can come help too. That'd be good. Looking good. You know, offering you, bloke, slip your hand up to you, I, uh, and they'll get one to you. I, I have a couple of um, thank yous here. This one came from the, the, uh, the Rochester family. It says, Pastor Weedo and church family, what a tremendous blessing to be with you all uh, once again at Bible Baptist. We praise the Lord for you and the wonderful ministry there. And uh, they're just thanking us for. Uh, taking good care of them while they were here, and we thank the Lord for that. Um, also have a uh, missionary prayer letter here, and uh, a few years ago we had the uh, Kevin Walker family come in, and we were able to take on um, K.W. Walker, and um, 
uh, Joe Walker. So we had all three of them. We took them on, and, and one of them has gone to pastor now. And um, so anyway, I, their team is not as big as it was, and, and uh, they're still getting the job done for the Lord. And he's got that little uh, champ is the little uh, pony, and Dixie is the dog. And uh, he does that dog and pony show, amen, and they get lots of, lots of folks saved. And let me read this to you. We're glad to report that we are going strong for the Lord again. After last year, we wondered if things would ever get back to normal. Uh, normal for us is helping churches have big days with many visitors and seeing souls saved. Glad to report that we have had some really great days this spring. First, we started out uh, with Pastor um, uh, uh, C.K. White in Delaware doing a huge day on Saturday where we advertised the Cowboy Carnival champ and an Easter egg hunt. Uh, he has uh, learned how to spend a little bit of money uh, advertising on Facebook and had names and addresses of those who planned to attend before the event. He actually had over 1,200 in attendance. It was remarkable to see over 150 hands raised accepting Christ. I had numerous people come up to me thank, uh, thanking me for a son, a daughter, or a grandchild getting saved. We were also uh, with Pastor Daryl Cox in North Carolina. He has a tremendous bus ministry. Since COVID, he's been running the buses on Saturdays and was hoping to have 400. We had over 600 on the buses and 93 souls were saved. Also, we were with Pastor Carlo Lito in Maryland where he had a wonderful uh, Saturday carnival and, and show with Champ. He had over 600 there uh, with over 60 souls saved. It was quite exciting. Well, we were out uh, every weekend somewhere enjoying uh, in, and enjoyed seeing visitors each Sunday with souls being saved. This is why you support us on a monthly basis. You are enabling us to go assist these churches re uh, reach their areas for Christ. Uh, God has led us to have Josiah and R Ruth Ann Goddard join our team for the VBS season. They will be traveling in one of our rigs and helping us with our busy summer we have ahead of us. Then they will begin their deputation to be missionaries to to uh, Trinidad. We are praying that perhaps they will gain some support even while they are traveling with us. Perhaps you have room in your missions budget to consider them. In his service, Kevin L. Walker. And uh, this is kind of a picture of, of their new prayer card. And they're going to be having some new prayer cards coming our way. So anyway, we love the Walker family and, and Brother Kevin and Mr. Loretta have been faithful for many years and, and uh, they're just down home people. But I mean, God's used them in a great way. We're honored to support them. Amen. And we love them very much. So Anyway, I just wanted to read that prayer letter tonight, okay? All right. Well, Brother Dalton, will you step up here and ask the Lord to bless the offering, please? Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for letting us all be able to get here safely tonight. Please help the offering. Please help the gift and the giver. And uh, please help us to have a good service. Please help us to get home safely afterwards. And we'll thank you and love you for everything you do. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Is our hope in life and death? Christ alone, Christ alone. What is our only confidence? That our souls to Him belong. Who holds our days within His hands? 
What comes apart from his commands? And what will keep us till the end? The love of Christ from which we stand. Oh, sing hallelujah. Our hope springs eternal. Oh, sing hallelujah. Now and never we can pass. Christ our hope in life and death. Arise, who stands above the stormy trial, who sends a wave that bring us nigh unto the shore, the rock of Christ. Oh, Hallelujah, our hope springs eternal. Oh, sing hallelujah, now and never we confess. Christ our hope in life and death. Unto the grave what shall we sing? Christ he lives, Christ he lives. And what reward will heaven bring? Everlasting life with him. Then we will rise to meet the Lord. And sin and death will be destroyed. And we will feast in endless joy when Christ is ours forevermore. Oh, sing hallelujah, our hope springs eternal. Oh, sing hallelujah, now and never we confess Christ our hope in life and death. Oh, sing hallelujah, our hope springs eternal. Oh, sing hallelujah, now and never we confess. Christ our hope in life and death. Now and never we confess. Christ our hope in life and death. Amen. That was good, wasn't it? Yeah. That was a blessing. Amen. Wednesday night at the close of the service, we will have our business meeting and, and uh, have our election of uh, some new trustees and also uh, take on some more missionaries. Amen. And uh, I love it. Amen. I love serving the Lord. It's not something we have to do. It's something we get to do. Amen. And I appreciate our young people singing for the Lord and choirs and boys and girls growing up singing for the Lord. You know, I'm glad I know church songs. You know, I mean, I know a lot of the old songs from back in the day and, and, uh, you know, I grew up in the 60s, and so uh, I know a lot of those songs back there that weren't really good songs, you know, but um, they're in my head. But I'm glad that I got over on God's music and got God's songs in my heart. And I'm glad when we open a song book, uh, except on Wednesday nights, um, I know most of the songs that we sing. Amen. And on Wednesday nights, we're going just song after song after song, and there's a lot of them that I don't know and I've never heard. And even after I've heard them, I still don't know them. But um, we're taking a stab at him, and I appreciate Brother Lee trying to do that. Remember the ladies' meeting this Thursday night at 6.30 here at the church, and uh, Miss Crystal and Carly are the hostesses. And uh, if, you need, if you have any questions, call them anytime, day or night. Preferably like in the wee hours of the morning when you get up to go to the bathroom, just call or text, and they'll be right there to answer those calls for you while Brother Lee's sleeping. Amen. All right. So that'll be good. That'll be this Thursday night at the Fellowship Hall um, potluck, okay? And um, anyway, uh, if you have your Bibles tonight, turn to Romans chapter 15. We've been talking about patience and, and preached several messages on patience. And tonight we're just kind of, you know, maybe actually kind of learn how to, how to apply or how to implement these attribute or this attribute of patience uh, into our lives. And, and um I want you to look at give you several things tonight, and then we'll be done. But uh, Romans chapter 15, and um, you know, we learned in Peter that uh, we're to add patience, you know, uh, to our, our lives, and and it's one of those attributes that, that we're supposed to uh, have in our life, and and um, 
you know, again, we've talked about it quite a bit these last, um, these last few weeks, and I, I think it's um, 2 Peter 1 where it said that, um, besides uh, this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience. So it's a list of those graces there, those seven graces, and, and one of them is patience, and that's just to cheerfully endure. And you know, it's always, it's always hard to see bad things we might say happen to good people, but it, it happens that way. It, and you know, you read your Bible, there's a lot of Bible characters where just some really, they went through some bad stuff. And, and you know, we don't wish that on anybody, but the practice of patience and implementing it into our lives I think is very, very important because we are supposed to add it to our faith, okay, one of those graces. So let me give you some things tonight. Number one, um, we're talking about the practice of patience and adding to our lives. Number one is through attendance to the scriptures. Just, I mean, just through atten being attentive to the scriptures. I mean, listening and, and thinking and meditating and on the word of God. And look in Romans chapter 16, or 15 rather, Romans 15 verse number 4. The Bible says, for what sort of things were written aforetime were written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So, you know, so when I read a Bible story and I see uh, Daniel in the lion's den, I mean, that just lets me know that, hey, God is there for me. When I, you know, I mean, there's Bible story after Bible story after Bible story where it just looked, I mean, hopeless. But then God was there. And when we read those stories, it ought to kind of let us know that, hey, God is here for me and God loves me. And, you know what I'm saying, just having, I just, you know, it just takes patience to kind of gain the comfort of the scriptures. Well, if I'm not in the scriptures and not giving attendance to what God's word says, then I'm not even going to know what the Bible stories are that would help me. Does that make sense? So, wow, um, you know, if we just diligently go after the Lord through, through attendance to the scriptures, we'll find that God adds patience into our lives through the scriptures. I like that. I like that, okay? And the Bible, again, just full of examples of God bringing people through their trials and testings and through attendance to these accounts, we can learn the truths that would help us to kind of navigate through our rough waters and tribulations that we would face. Number two... Number one, through attendance to the scripture. Number two, through dependence upon God. Through dependence upon God. Take your Bibles and turn to Colossians chapter number one. Colossians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. There it is. Colossians chapter number one and verse number 11. Colossians 1, 11. The Bible says, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power, look at this now, unto all patience and long-suffering, how are we supposed to do that? With joyfulness. Wow, with joyfulness. And again, it might seem a little odd to say that patience comes through our dependence on God, but if we practice dependence on God and we let God know how much we need him, little by little, that adds patience to our lives. And so, uh, you know, again, we just need to be in a constant state of learning patience as our dependence moves. Everybody look at me. From the flesh, from our flesh, to the power of God. And man, I would not want to go through this life by myself or without the Lord. I'm telling you, I really wouldn't. You know, I've been thinking about that funeral this week, the man who passed away in prison, you know, and and, I, you know, I've just been thinking about that. You know, I mean, uh, you know, uh, again, I, I'm going to call the chaplain. The chaplain knows me at the Wrightsville unit. And uh, so uh, they're going to send me the chaplain's name. I'm going to talk to the chaplain and, and kind of get the rest of the story and all that. But, wow, you know, you just think about just, just the things that we go through in life and, and dependence on our ability. I don't want to depend on my abilities. And, uh, no, I, and listen, that's what gets us in trouble when I start thinking I got it when I don't got it. No, faith is trusting in God's ability instead of our own ability. That's what faith is. Absolute confidence in God. And faith moves us from the realm of, of our abilities to the realm of God's abilities. And God, with God, nothing is impossible. We sing about that sometimes. Nothing is impossible when you put your trust in God. And trials help us see more clearly that we cannot make it without God. The patience that we learn through trials helps us to walk by faith and not by sight. Man, I need God. I need God. You need God. Number three, 
Turn to Hebrews chapter number 12. The third one is, and we're talking about adding patience and implementing it into our lives and how would we do that. The third way is through laying aside every weight of sin. Laying aside every weight of sin. I know these are familiar verses, but we're just daring to repeat the obvious. So through laying aside every weight of sin in our lives, uh, we can learn to add patience. Now look at Hebrews chapter 12 and verse number 1. The Bible says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. And let us run with patience, there's our word patience, the race that is set before us. Well, I read the story in the Our Daily Bread. It was a quote from George Matheson, and he said this, he said, We commonly associate patience with lying down. We think of it as the angel that guards the couch of the invalid. Yet there is a patience, I believe, to be harder the patience that can run, to lie down in the time of grief, to be quiet under the stroke of adverse fortune implies a great strength, but I know of something that implies a strength greater still. It is the power to work under stress, to have a great weight at your heart and still run, to have a, d a deep anguish in your spirit and still perform the daily task. It is a Christ-like a Christ -like thing. The hardest thing is that most of us are called to exercise our patience, not in the sick bed, but in the street. And that just means that life goes on. You know, we just have to keep on keeping on, even after whatever happens to us in our lives. I mean, we just have to kind of, you know, keep on being patient, trust in the Lord. And, uh, you know, again, I don't know why it's so, so hard to put our old, old nature down, but it is. But through patience and diligent perseverance in, in, in truth, and little by little we learn the truth from God's Word, and it helps us to lay aside the sin in our lives. And the more sin you lay aside in your life, the more patience you add to your life and the more maturity that develops in your heart as a, as a child of God. Number four, number four, we can add patience through obedience to God's commandment. And I know that kind of goes with the first point about giving attendance to the Word of God, but uh, this kind of takes us to the, the, the next step of be, being a doer of the Word. Look in Revelation chapter 14. Revelation chapter 14. Revelation chapter 14, and look at verse number 12. Revelation 14, 12, the Bible says this, here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and faith of Jesus. So our patience consists of keeping the commandments of God. So when things go wrong, as they sometimes will, and the road you're trudging seems all uphill, and the funds are low, and the debts are high, and you want to laugh, but you have to sigh. When care is pressing you down a bit, rest if you must, but don't you quit. Yeah. Now, you hang in there. You hang in there and keep on doing what's right, okay? And, and, and again, keep doing what you know God has said to do in his word. Don't throw God under the bus when, when, when a trial or a testing comes into your life, okay? Patience is the Christian, in the Christian life, consists of obeying the commandments of God. I mean, I, I'm not the smartest person, but, you know, uh, there's a lot of things in the Bible that I do understand. Now, it's a challenge for me to, to, to obey all the things I know in the Bible that I'm supposed to do. Somebody say amen right there. There might be some that I don't understand, but most of it, I, I got it down pretty good. And when I mess up, I, I kind of, it's pretty obvious that I know I've messed up. When I'm obedient, I feel good in my heart when I'm obedient to, to obey the commandments of God one by one. And God takes all these things and us kind of obeying and his commandments and, he, and trials and testings and reigning on the just and the unjust. And he takes all those things, but as his children, he works it together for our good. All things. We know that all things, it doesn't say all things are good. It says all things work together for good. Are you all with me on that one? You leave an ingredient out of the biscuit recipe and you'll find out that all things work together for good. You leave something out and it don't taste right. You know what I'm saying? Well, God works all these things together for, for our good and for his glory. Wow. Wow. 
So our patience consists of just keeping the commandments of God, obeying the commandments of God. Number five, say how many we got? Six. We're doing good, aren't we? Take your Bibles and turn to Romans chapter number 12. Romans chapter number 12. Romans chapter number 12. Man, I start studying this stuff and reading this stuff and I just kind of like thinking, man, I haven't been what I ought to be in this area of patience. I need to work on it more. You need to work on it more. How I many of y'all know what I'm talking about right there? And I get, oh man, probably need to pe preach on patience about once a week, amen, for the rest of the, the time we're here. This one here says we can add patience through prayer. Patience through prayer. Wasn't that awesome this morning that when Peter was in prison between those two guards and the church was praying? Wow, and then the, the answer to their prayer was knocking at the door. And God, I'm telling you all, we have no idea how powerful prayer is. Prayer is very important to God. I mean, God's word is God speaking to us. Prayer is us talking to God. Well, we need to be doing more of that. We can add patience through prayer. Look at Romans chapter 12 and verse number 12. The Bible says, Rejoice in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. Continuing instant in prayer. So when, when troubles come and trials come, and they do and they will, prayer is how we bring our complaints to God. Too often we complain to everybody else except the Lord, except the one who can actually do something about it. We go to everybody else and, and we don't go to the Lord. You know, he said, cast your care on me. You know, I mean, cast all your care upon me. I care for you. I love you. Let me help you with that burden. Let me help you with that trial. And, man, we go, go, you know, we go to Facebook. We go to everybody under the sun instead of going to the good Lord. A lot of people in the Bible complain to God about their circumstances. God already knows what's in our heart anyway. He's not surprised when we're struggling. He expects it. It wouldn't be a trial if there was no hardship. With trials come burdens. And God wants to learn, for us to learn how to pour our hearts out, our complaints out to him instead of somebody else. Turn to Psalms 102. 102nd Psalm. I know Psalms in here somewhere. It's the biggest book in the Bible. Psalms 102. It's called the prayer of the afflicted when he was overwhelmed. And, and, and he's pouring out his complaint before the Lord. Have you ever been there? Psalms 102, verse 1. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and let my cry come unto thee. Hide not thy face from me in the day when I am in trouble. Incline thine ear unto me in the day when I call. Answer me speedily. For my days are consumed like smoke, and my bones are burned as in hearth. My heart is smitten and withered like grass, so that I forget to eat my, eat, eat my bread. By reason of the voice of my groaning, my bones cleave to my skin. I'm like a pelican of the wilderness. I'm like an owl of the desert. I watch, and I'm as a sparrow alone upon the housetop. Mine enemies reproach me all the day, and they that are mad against me or sworn against me. For I have eaten ashes like bread and mingled my drink with weeping because of thine indignation and thy wrath. For thou hast lifted me up and cast me down. My days are like a shadow that declineth, and I am withered like grass. But thou, O Lord, shall endure forever. And thy remembrance unto all generations. Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yea, the set time is come. For thy servants take pleasure in her stones and favor the dust thereof. 
Though the heathen shall fear the name of the Lord, and all the kings of the earth thy glory. When the Lord shall build up Zion, he shall appear in his glory. He will regard the prayer of the destitute and not despise their prayer. This shall be written for the generations to come. And the people which shall be created shall praise the Lord. For he hath looked down from the height of his sanctuary. From heaven did the Lord behold the earth. I mean, I'm glad that he, he will regard, verse 17, the prayer of the destitute and not despise their prayer. It's a witness for generations to come that, hey, when you pray and you cry out to God and you pour your heart out, when you're overwhelmed, uh, you can bring your complaints to God. And he's there for us. He loves us. To hear the groaning of the prisoner. I wonder if the Lord heard Peter's prayer in that prison. Wow, Lord. This ain't looking too good for the home team. The Lord said, hey, Peter, I got this one. I got this one. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. Paul and Silas sang praises to the Lord at midnight. Oh, yeah. To hear the groaning of the prisoner, to loose those that are appointed to death. God did that. Did you notice who Peter gave the glory to when he got out? It wasn't about Peter's testimony and him traveling around and making money, you know. No. Well, that would have made a good movie. But I'm telling you, Peter wasn't about that. I think he was more interested in getting out of Dodge and getting away from Herod so he could continue his ministry. Wow. Wow. God heard and answered Hannah's prayers in 1 Samuel 1, 15, 16. Remember that? The prayer of Hannah and what she prayed for a little man child. She was barren, couldn't have children. And God heard her complaint, didn't he? Sure did. And he answered her prayer and gave her a little man child. She said, Lord, if you'll give me a little boy, I'll give him back to you all the days of his life. I'll give him back to you, Lord, I will. And she did. And Samuel became a great man of God. So God wants to hear and answer our prayers. He wants to hear. Number six, the last one tonight. Turn back to James chapter number five. James chapter number five. Just giving some things on how we can add patience. One of those graces that we're supposed to be adding to our faith. James chapter five and number six, we add patience by remembering that Jesus Christ will return. Amen. Yeah, he's coming back, y'all. He's coming back. He's going to return, and we just need to add patience by remembering that, hey, uh, Jesus is coming back soon. We believe in the imminent soon return of the Lord Jesus Christ. James 5, 8 says, Be ye also patient. Be ye also patient. Establish your heart. You just hang in there and keep doing right. Keep obeying the Lord's commandments and doing right. Why would we want to do that? For the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. The coming of the Lord draweth nigh. You know what? Um, Brother Lee, we sing that song sometimes. It will be worth it all. Huh. It will be worth it all when we see Jesus. One glimpse of his dear face, all sorrow will erase. So bravely run the race till we see Christ. How many of y'all ever played hide and go seek when you was little? How many of y'all ever peeked when you were supposed to be hiding your eyes and you peeked to see where somebody else was? How many of y'all ever counted by fives? Five, 10, 15, 20. And then what would we say when we got through counting? We'd say, ready or not, here I come. You know what's fixing to happen? The trumpet's going to sound. Ready or not, ready or not, man, I'd like to be established in my faith and be patiently waiting and looking and longing for his coming. Man, the trumpet sound, huh. Then in Christ shall rise first, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Amen. Huh. It's going to be good, y'all. Yeah, it's going to be worth it all. It sure is. Take your Bibles and turn to uh, Hebrews chapter 11. So we take the Bible. The Bible says, Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And 
we we'll use illustrations and we draw pictures and paint pictures with the Bible. We bring different styles of preachers in with different personalities and we're all preaching the Bible, the Bible, the Bible. And man, the Word of God. Look at Hebrews chapter 11 and verse number 27. I want to follow the example of Moses. Hebrews 11, 27. The Bible says it like this about Moses. It says, by faith, Moses, by faith he, Moses, forsook Egypt. You know what Egypt is in the Bible? Egypt is always a type of the world. It's a type of the world, okay? Now, it, he said he forsook Egypt. Are you with me? He forsook Egypt. Look at this now. Not fearing the wrath of the king. You remember that? Not fearing the wrath of the king, but look how he did it. For he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Wow. Through the eyes of faith, through the eyes of faith, Moses looked down through time, and he just did it for Jesus. Amen. He forsook the world for Jesus' sake. Amen. Listen, because of what Jesus has done for me and how he saved my soul, and I'm not going to hell no more. Amen. I want to live my life for the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I want to forsake Egypt, and I want to endure seeing him who is invisible, because one day I will see him. The songwriter said, face to face with Christ my Savior. Face to face, what will it be? When with rapture I behold him, Jesus Christ, who died for me. Oh, listen, man, when we see Jesus, when we see Christ, wow, it's going to be good, y'all. It's going to be good. Getting a good view of God right now. Man, through the eyes of faith, through the scriptures, through the Holy Spirit, getting a good view of God right now will help us have patience until he comes. I'm, I'm past ready for him to come back. I mean, I've been ready for him to come back. I'm waiting on him. I'm looking. I'm longing. But, man, I want to get a good view of him. Just help me to hold the line. Amen. Keep on keeping on for him. By the way, there's a joy and, and there's a peace. You know, yesterday when I led Brother Ronnie Martin to the Lord, he said, oh, he said, I feel it. Feel peace in my right here. Just patting himself on the chest. He said, I feel peace right here. Bruce Laura's worried about him. She's thinking I might need another man in the baptistry to help me with him. She's like, I don't know what Ronnie's gonna do with his feet. If he pulls his feet up, preacher, he's gonna pull you under too. I said, like, What in the world? But anyway, I mean, you know, I don't know about all that. I may get somebody up there to help me, amen. We'll get two of us. Surely we can get him down and get up without the preacher drowning, amen. Praise the Lord. Well, really, Brother Ronnie, of course, first, and then me second, and my helper third. We, you know, we wouldn't worry about who that is. So, if you, we can have you write some names down tonight on who you would suggest the helper be. Yeah. But you know, there's a joy and a peace that's found in his presence when we're close to him, and, and even a greater joy just waiting with patience for the presence to come, his presence to come. And by learning patience and in practicing patience, we, like Joseph, we can see the triumph from tragedies and we can take bad situations and, 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 and spin them and give them back to God and realize that, wow, God's, God's in control of everything. Let me ask you this tonight. How are you doing with adding this grace of patience into your life? Are you rebelling against it or are you embracing it and saying, you know, the Lord's allowed this stuff to happen to me, this gift of the, of the trial? Man, I, 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 I want to I accept it with joy and obtain the promise of patience. I do. I wanna, if that's what he wants me to have, I mean, if it's, if it's what he wants me to have, then I'm, I'm willing to do whatever he wants because I'm not my own, and I love him. I love the Lord. Let's bow our heads tonight. Thank you for being here. Thank you for listening. And we're going to have our invitation. Brother Lee, maybe we could sing that song. Uh, it, it will be worth it all. That would be all right. And it, it, it's going to be worth it all, y'all. I mean, I'm telling you. Somebody said, I, I read the back of the book and we win. And uh, I'm very thankful for that. Nobody likes trouble. Nobody likes trial. Nobody likes tribulation. But the Bible says, add to your faith patience. And tribulation worth with patience. And I'll tell you, I, I need, I need to be obedient to the scriptures, obey the commandments of God. I need to listen and be attentive to the word of God. I just need God. Let, let's stand together tonight.
If you're here tonight and you're lost, we would invite you to come and be saved tonight by the grace of God. As if you're here tonight and you say, you know, Lord, I just need, need, need I want to just be close to you, Lord. Whatever you have, I'm, I'm good with it. I'm just going to try to stay close to you and follow close in. Father, bless the message now, Lord. Thank you for uh, sustaining us, Lord, and helping us through the day. We sure do love you. Thank you for keeping the buses safe today, Lord. I know it's a hot day on the buses, Lord. And please bless our workers, Lord. And our labor's not in vain in the Lord. I don't care if one bus kid comes, Lord. It's worth it all. And God, thank you for all the bus kids that have been saved over all the years. Thank you for our Character First program and for Bible school and youth camp. And, Lord, all of our ministries, our missionaries, and, Lord, all the different things we have going on. Lord, thank you for faithful servants of God. Lord, help us, too, to be faithful. Lord, through all the ups and downs of life, help us to pray. Lord, help us to pray like we've never prayed. Lord, help us to uh, attend to the scriptures. Lord, help us to obey the scriptures, the commandments of God. Lord, bless this message now to our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you need to come tonight, you step out and come as we sing. Hymn number two, we're going to sing that song. It will be worth it all when we see Jesus. Hymn number two. If you need to come tonight to the altar, you come on down. God bless you. God bless you. Tempted to complain, to murmur, and despair. Hey, he's fixing to come back. You hang in there. Amen. Hey, when you see him one day, it's going to be worth it all. Wow. My dad was getting up in years. We were talking one day, and he said, Son, he said, I've been praying about going over to Waxahachie, Texas, and starting a church. He said, What do you think? And he was up in years. And I, I said, Dad, what do you think? And my dad said this. He said, Son, he said, I'd really like to just die doing what I've always done. I just want to die doing what I've always done. Across town tonight, Kendall and Dalton Smith's grandpa, his brother Billy Smith. Brother Billy's probably 85. I don't know how old he is. Been, been doing it a long time. Nobody's failing him, but You're just staying with the Lord. I, I like to get around people like that. Man, they can't run, jump high. I know a preacher friend up in Michigan, 91 years old, 92. I don't know Don Green's his name, Lansing, Michigan. He'll call me on the telephone and say. Brother Weedo, Don Green. Hey, Brother Green, how's it going? He said, Preacher, I can't get out and knock the doors no more. He said, I pray. He prays about six hours a day, seven hours a day. I'm glad I'm on his prayer list. Oh, yeah, he told me, he said, you worked your way into my heart. Years ago, Brother Weedo, you worked your way into my heart. You know, his wife had cancer and daughter had cancer. And I've got all these notes in my Bible, but I appreciate Brother Green. The last time I heard him preach, he's not even traveling anymore. They helped him get up on the platform. He got up there and preached a lot on consecration, on consecrating your life to the Lord. 
giving your life completely over to the Lord. Old timey, I mean old timey Christian. And we got back to the motel. We were staying in the same motel, you know, and they were helping him get around. And he said, Brother, we know how to do it. I said, Oh, Brother Green, you did, you did good. You did good. I'm telling you, I was getting goosebumps, just the presence and power of God in his life. Hey, listen, don't ever give up on the Lord. Don't ever quit. Don't ever quit, man. Just keep on keeping on. Have patience. He's coming back. He's coming back. And I just want to live for him and love him. Amen. We may not always be able to do everything we're doing now, but hey, I just want to serve him. Do what I can do. Do what I can do while I'm able to do it. Amen. It's a blessing. All right, Brother Lee, come with any final word. And, and uh, thank y'all for being here tonight. It's good stuff. And um, Wednesday night we'll be right back in for, um, for the um, uh, Proverbs and then the business meeting at the close and then Thursday night, ladies, uh, 630, okay? There's adult choir practice, so stick around. Father, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for our pastor who loves you. And, uh, Lord, we, we thank you for loving us, Lord. We don't deserve it, but you you love us anyway. And, uh, Lord, we pray that you'll help us this week, be with all the ministries that are happening this week, and to be with character first. And just fill us with your power, your strength, and your spirit, Lord, this week. And uh, help us be a blessing to those kids who come in the character first. And, uh, uh, let them see that we love them and uh, that you love them also, Lord. And, uh, Lord, just give our pastor power this week and uh, give him clear direction on what to do and when to do it. And, uh, Lord, we love you. We ask that you dismiss us with your grace and mercy. In Jesus' name, amen.